Mr. Uh, Apagopoulos. Now this interview is routine. We always re-interview anyone who has been on welfare for more than six months. You know, I, uh, I hate being on welfare. I'd rather get a job. Well now, wait a minute. Your timing is excellent. Just a second now. Let's see here now. Here it comes. We just got a job opening from a very wealthy old man who wants a chauffeur bodyguard for his nymphomaniac daughter. Whoa, hoo hoo, she's a looker. Now you have to drive around in his Mercedes, but he'll supply you with all your clothes and your meals. You'll be expected to escort this daughter overseas on holiday trips. Two bedroom apartment is available for you over the garage and the starting salary is $200,000 a year with benefits. Uh. You're pulling my leg. And you started it. <laughs> and it cost us nearly $45 to get to Spokane and back. I think the oil companies are ripping us off. Oil companies? I went to the gas station the other day. I asked the attendant for five bucks worth of gas. He farted and gave me a receipt. Speaking of ripoffs, let's consider the following. Wow, let's look at our cars. Are you hurt? No, I'm okay. Are, are you all right? Yeah, nothing broken. I'm okay. You know, our cars are totaled and we're both okay. This might sound a little weird, but Maybe that's a sign that we're supposed to meet. You could be right. It could be a sign. Wow. Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> My car's just demolished, but this bottle of brandy didn't even break. You know, surely this is a sign that we should toast our good luck and maybe our future. <laughs> well, maybe you're right. Maybe we should have a toast. You know, you've been so great, you go first. Uh, if you insist. Well, you're not having any? Mm, nah. I think I'll wait for the police to get here. You know how hard it is to get people interested in volunteering for my senior citizens committee. But we did manage to get three people yesterday. Well, I tell you, running the festival committee's tough. But we were able to pick up two new members just this past week. How's it going with you, Fred? Well, I'll tell you, I think both you guys know the problems we've been having with the theater board. But I'm glad to report that we got rid of the five biggest troublemakers this past week. <laughs> Raising kids is no small matter. And if you think raising your own is tough, consider teachers and what they have to put up with while the little darlings are awake. However, some teachers come up with some pretty ingenious ways to get their point across. I've mentioned this more than once. It's about time you girls got to see what you put Mr. Hardison through every time you leave your lip prints on the mirror. Step one, Eddie. I just had another fight with a little woman. Another one, huh? 
How'd this one end? Well, when it was over, she came to me on her hands and knees. Really? That's a switch. What'd she say? Come out from under that bed, you gutless weasel. Now come, Mrs. Flizdorf. You'll have to tell me what it is that bothers you so I can help you. Well, I've been having this problem with gas. You know what I'm talking about? Of course. Go ahead. Well, it doesn't bother me too much. When I pass the gas, it doesn't smell, and they're always silent. As a matter of fact, I've passed gas about 20 times since I've been here, and I'll bet you haven't even noticed. I see. I'm going to write you a prescription. You take one pill each morning, then come and see me next week. We'll take it from there. Thank you. Doctor, I don't know what you gave me, but even though they're still silent, my gas smells something awful. That's good, Mrs. Flizdorf. Now that we've cleared up your sinuses, let's get to work on your hearing. Mrs. Jones, do you know me? Why, yes, Mr. Williams. I've known you since you were a young boy. And frankly, you've been a great disappointment to me. You lie. You cheat, you manipulate people, then talk about them behind their back. And you think you're a big shot. When truth be known, you don't have the brains to realize you'll never be anything but a paper pusher. Yes, I know you. I, well, do you know the plaintiff's attorney? Of course. I've known Mr. Bradley since he was a youngster, too. He's lazy. He's a bigot, and he has a drinking problem. He'll never maintain a normal relationship with anyone. And furthermore, his law practice is known as one of the worst in the entire state. He's had affairs with three different women, one of which was your wife. Yes, I know him all right. Counselors, if you'll approach the bench. If either one of you SOBs asks her if she knows me, I'll throw your sorry little behinds in the slammer for contempt. Mm -hmm.